okay? And the people that are taking a long time, I have a feeling that there's S or C in you. <laughs> people that are done already are probably more DIs. Uh, okay. Where do you want us to write it? <laughs> you guys know, people were like, gee, you didn't say where to write it. Because I don't care. I'm sorry, I don't. Okay. So we talked, um, we're going to go ahead and flip open, open your book uh, to page eight. The new book. The new book. Now, this is a little bit more historical background. Uh, we talked a little bit very broadly about this, but uh, you know, we already talked a little bit about Hippocrates and, uh, and the, the four temperaments and all that. But then uh, William Marston, obviously, we talked about, I think I said Walter, I'm sorry. Uh, I knew that, William Marston. Um, and then Dr. John Greer uh, came up with uh, the first assessment that we're going to look at uh, back in uh, 1977. Uh, and then eventually, uh, there's a staff psychologist at Dallas Theological Seminary, Dr. Miles Carbonell, who designed the first of kind combination personality and a faith-based profile, which is overall what you guys have. Now, we're just looking at the disc portion right now, but he's the one that brought a lot of this together. And so, um, you know, we we owe a lot to these pioneers because without it, we wouldn't have this. And I tell you, I think you're going to love this assessment as you take it because it's really beneficial. So um, flip over to your next page, which is page nine. Um, and then the folks that have the, se the separate one there. And what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to push you guys through this. Okay. Now I mean that, and that literally I'm going to push you um, because. Oftentimes, in, in times of stress, is when our personalities come out more. So I recognize already that some of you like to process this, okay? And I'm going to make it difficult. I, I apologize up front. I'm not doing it to be mean, okay? So what we're going to look at uh, is this questionnaire. You'll see that there are groupings of four questions. You guys see that? How there are black lines around four? Well, the goal is not to answer all four of these. What you're going to do is you're going to take two of these groupings, and that's how you're, what you're going to answer. Now, look at the top on the right with this example. It says M and L, then the example. You see what I'm looking at? Uh, it says there's a, an X uh, under kind or beside kind, nice, and caring, and then there's an X beside demanding and asserting. You guys see where I'm talking? Now, you see that that's a grouping of four questions, but they've only answered two. One was an M, which is the most like you. It doesn't mean it's the only like you, but you're looking at the grouping of words. This is most like me. Then the L is what's least like you. Does it mean that there may be something that's like, well, I do that. It's the least, all right? Now, you're not going to answer all four if, in a grouping. If you do... It's wrong, and nobody wants to be wrong. It won't work, okay? How many of these in each grouping are you going to answer? Two. One M and one L, okay? And I'm going to walk around a little bit, make sure we're doing it okay. Um, and I'm going to get and give you about 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds. I'm going to watch. You have to read them as quickly as you can, and I want gut responses, and I know my C's and my S's are going, I don't like you've got responses. Okay? So, you, re you guys feel comfortable? Yeah. Are you ready? ready? All right, let me get my timer up here. Come on. Set. All right. I'm going to give you about 15 seconds with the first group. So, who's willing to share, uh, say they're, they're, they're blend again, and then tell me what uh, that little description says? Um, actually, let's do just the else. Let's just look at else. And that's me. Yeah. I can share mine. I'm okay. A I'm a DIC. It's absolutely disturbing how after it is, I would be the dominant, inspiring caution. <laughs> it says that I'm demanding, impressing, and competent, and task oriented, but people oriented before crowds, which is exactly what I, people think that I am so relational because they see me in front of crowds. Uh, I don't mind change. I'm active and outgoing, but also compliant and cautious. I like to do things correctly while driving and influencing others to follow. And there are verbal skills combined with determination and competence to achieve. So it's 
security is not as important as accomplishment. I'm looking good. Yeah. That's my marriage. OK, no, just kidding. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Uh, was somebody else you want to share? <laughs> uh huh. Um, it says types of determined students and defiant critics. They want to be in charge while collecting information and to accomplish tasks. They care more about getting the job done and doing it right than what others think or feel. They drive themselves and others. They are dominant and caustic. Improving their people skills is important. They need to be more sensitive and understanding. They are motivated by choices and challenges to do well. Uh, so caustic uh, isn't always considered a positive word. Yeah. <laughs> um, that. Wait, here, yeah, here we go. I want to look it up because I was like, I don't know what that is. Siri, what is caustic? Here is what I found. Oh, it didn't respond for me. Okay, bummer. Okay. Sometimes she'll say the things out loud. All right. Uh, so, yeah, it can be that in your face, um, not... Loving. <laughs> okay, I will stop there. Okay, Severely yeah. Severely critical or yeah. I just tried to do the, the more indirect. You see how I did the well, indirect? I there? Yeah. Myself when I was reading the other thing, I was like, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, good. Uh, and so, and again, D, DC is not, it's not bad. There's a lot of positive to that. You're going to get it done, but yet you're going to get the details. So we said one of the big drawbacks of a D, a stereotypical D, is that they don't look to the details, but you're going to. Um, which may drive some people nuts because you're going to drive them to get it, uh, but you do want those details before you move on. So, you're intense and perfect. <laughs> saying, <laughs> ask her or another DC. Okay, I'm dying to know what Cliff. Is. Cliff, yeah, can you read? Can you read your L? <laughs> I love that you stopped yourself to justify exactly what this meant. That was good. That was editorial by Cliff. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and so if it comes across as fake, yeah. and yeah. Okay, well, we'll not talk too much. I'm just kidding, no. Uh, <laughs> but it is, and that is important, right? And that's that, that S and C especially. It's, you know, you got to tell me you, you really mean this. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, anybody else want to share? I'll share. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm an, actually an ISD, but IDS is closest. Okay. Um, we're in VR. Not as cautious and calculating as those with more C tendencies. They're they are more active than passive. Uh, tend also um, they have sensitivity and steadiness. They may seem to be more people oriented, but can be dominant and decisive in their task orientation. They need to be more contemplative and conservative. Details don't seem as important as taking charge of working with people. Absolutely, makes me a great assistant. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> 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 and now, Eric, you were a single, is that right? Was your M a single? Or was my M was a single. But your L was? My L was three. I three, okay. CSI. That's right, okay. CSI. 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 Yeah. He is CSI. Three, that I want to know what that is. <laughs> would, you, would you mind sharing? Sure. Uh, the CS, the L? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, CI, or CIS, um, like to do things right others and stabilize situations. They are not aggressive or pushy people. They enjoy, they enjoy large and small crowds. They are good with people and prefer quality. They are sensitive to what others think about them and their work. 
They need to be more determined and dominant. They can do things well, but are poor at quick decision making. They are capable of do or they are capable of capable of doing great things through people, but need to be more self-motivated and assertive. They are stimulated by sincere, enthusiastic approval and logical explanation. There you go. You agree with that? I do. You do. Anybody disagree with what, that's what I love about these assessments. And nobody was surprised, right? And, and nobody disagrees. Now, here's the thing. Uh, the reason I always save the assessment for last is because I want you guys to process through before you see it, right? And some people are like, oh, we're going to get to my assessment. And I love that you guys had already processed, and, and like John, you said, oh, yeah, when you were reading that, when we were talking about that, that was me. And so this is beneficial in helping you see other people because the benefits of knowing yourself, we call it emotional intelligence, and the benefit of knowing me is that I can modify my behavior, the negatives, and try to help the positives. And so from the Christian standpoint, obviously we need to rely on God on that, right? That let the Holy Spirit lead and guide. One of the things I think is amazing is that in, in the th things that we struggle in, the things that we may know that are negatives about our personality, meaning how I respond to that, you can always go to God and say, God, help me do this better. It's not like, oh, this is the way I am. Because remember, it's not just personality, it's that family of origin and the, the um, personal experience. But here's the other piece I think is even cooler than that. And this is the harder part. In our strengths, going to God and letting him get the glory for our strengths. Trusting him to lead through the Holy Spirit. That we're going to do well, not for us, but because we first want to love God. Right? First greatest commandment. Love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and body. Second, then, is like it. To love our neighbors as ourselves. Doesn't mean if I'm an I, an ID or DI, which is what I am, that I'm going to love the world that way. I'm going to love the world through my personality. No, I want to be loved as an ID. And so I want to love people the way God's wired them. But here's the other thing we've learned today. A lot of us wear masks. So what do you think about the people that you know? Are they wearing a mask? They probably are. And so getting to know them, it means getting to know them past that mask. It's getting the genuineness, helping to get to know them deep on a deeper level. Now, who's going to struggle with those deeper level friendships? Okay, I mean, let me get back. Which personality styles? <laughs> Sorry, yes, that was my question. Which personality styles? Thank you for your transparency. Uh, which of your personality styles are going to struggle with those deeper relationships? The D's. D's. And the I's. And the I's. And and the C's. The S's are the only ones. The S's. Now, thankfully, 40%. Who had an S in their uh, personality? Okay. Uh, yeah, above the midline. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, everybody has it. Yeah. Okay. So three. Yeah. So a little over half, actually. So it's a little bit above. Uh, who had an I? Above the midline. Above the midline. Everything's above the midline. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's actually above. Um, D's. Yes, okay, so we blew away the 10% rule. But you guys are going, hey, I want to learn how people can love me better, right? So you all came to this now. Uh, <laughs> close on, yes. All right, so we're going to uh, end our time looking at the last few pages here. I'm going to skip ahead uh, to page 27. And I, I love this. This is a great resource for you to take in this book. Uh, because what you can do now is, is take your time, especially for my C's and my S's, which I appreciate you, uh, and take your time to, to really understand these better. But if you're talking about a leader, anybody and any personality style can be a leader and can be an effective leader and can be God called to leader. Thomas was a leader. Moses was a leader. Esther was a leader. Right? Sarah was a leader. They were all leaders in different ways, but they were called to be leaders. This is one reason we look at them, because some people say, well, S's and C's are the behind-the-scenes people I can't lead. It's not at all true, especially when you go to God and God's calling you to lead. And so you can look and see what kind of leader you would be. 
But also, if you have someone in your life that is more of a leader, you can see what kind of personality are they lead by. So um, let's not look at the D's and I's because those are what people always look at. Let's look at C's. A C leader, on page 27, are competent and compliant. They go by the book and want to obey, or want to do everything just right. They are thorough and detail-oriented, but tend to be too informative. C's need to be more positive and enthusiastic. They answer questions people aren't asking. When optimistic, C's are extremely influential. They should not concentrate on problems, but focus on potentials. Now, see, I, I went to a friend who's a C, and I said, hey, I'm thinking of this idea. I want to get your thoughts on it. And what he did is he deconstructed my idea, because it's the way he processes, and then reconstructed it. But in that deconstruction process, he ripped it to shreds. And I'm like, this is the worst idea I've ever had. But then when he reconstructed it, he talked about all the pauses and built it back up. And he's like, I think this is awesome that you're going to do this. I think this is, yeah. And so letting the C, being aware of first, if you're not talking to a C, if you're a C not talking to a C, they're not going to hear it the same way, right? Um, but you can still lead well. And this person did, and they did get very optimistic. And so say, help process with me. All right, you've asked me for my thoughts. I need to think this out this way. Can I ask you a yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you determine what your leadership style is? If you're a blend? Yeah. So you're going to look at both of those. So, or all three. And, and you'll, you can start to know um, what kind of leader you're being by how you're responding and how you're leading. So if you find yourself as a C saying, you know, here's what I think we should do and here are the details around it, you can know that you're leading from more of a C mentality. Um, now, the, the benefit of being a blend with where you're saying about having all three is you really do, if you think through it, you get a choice on how you're going to lead, and you can vary it depending upon who you're talking to, right? Because the more personality is, are above the midline, the more, that, more of those blends that you have, you have a better uh, opportunity for those other dominants to come in. But it's a matter of owning that and saying, I'm going to, to react differently here. Yeah, you can choose, yeah. Now, you may have, like I say, kind of a primary dominance, kind of what I say. Yeah, like, a he's like, I tend to lead from an I. That's, um, but when cornered, I tend to go D. And there's a situation recently that I found myself going D, <laughs> right, because I was cornered. And I, made, and I saw now, my wife, I said, I'm not going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to choose to engage relationally. And, and it, was, it was a chore because my gut was to go D. Um, but I'm like, no, nope, I'm not going to do that. And so I tried not to. And for me, I'm normally an I, and I realize that nothing's getting done. Then I have to put on my D hat. Then you put your D hat on. Yeah, so you yeah. can, but, but being aware of it is the first step. Now that you start to see the patterns that we talked about with our numbers, you can start to see how to respond. Okay, and then you can start to look at other people. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm going to interrupt. Some no. of mine are kind of pushy, or can be pushy. My D can try to push it too hard, mm. Yeah, understanding why you're doing it. And that's what a lot of this is, understanding your patterns and then looking at people that are close to you and understanding theirs. Now, we've talked a lot about business because really it's easier and uh, it's not as, for most people, um, as close emotionally as relationships. So we've intentionally not talked a lot about relationships that are more family or home. Um, but this is obviously very true of, of kids. Your kids have a personality. And it may be different than yours. And understanding that, so you may be motivating a child um, through your motivation, but it's not meeting their needs at all, right? I'm not saying it's true, but that may be true. And trying to be aware of it is the first step, then acting on it is the second. Uh, and so that's why being aware of yourself. And then you see here on the follower style, it's the same idea, that if you're following, and you see a leader that's leading a certain way, you want to try the best you can to follow in that method. That'll be the most successful. It's funny, I teach this to high school students. There's a high school class I teach, and, and one of the kids came in once, and they're like, I love this stuff. 
I can finally manipulate my parents so well. <laughs> and I said, we're not trying to manipulate. But what he was saying is, I get what motivates them. And so, so tell me how you're manipulating. Well, I re- my mom was saying this, and I didn't understand it, but then I really thought of it from her perspective, and I got it. And so is this what you're saying? She's like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And it felt so good. So it really wasn't a manipulation at all, but that was the best word they could use to describe it, right? We don't want to manipulate. We want to go to God to understand people better. So that's part of the goal here. Um, and then, you know, and for your, for your own perusement, you've got how to handle conflicts in here. Uh, so we've already talked about maybe some differences, and that's some of the differences, and you can see how you handle conflicts. And then uh, turn to page 29 uh, for a moment. This is what I was looking for earlier, and I, I just could not find it. I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. Uh, this is more about ministry leaders as a whole, but I love this first, um, this first example under covenant. This, is, I think, is true of anybody. In obedience to God's holy word and commitment to practicing biblical resolution management, I promise to follow the principle of priorities. That is, my priorities are to glorify God, build harmony in the church, and avoid conflict. I will do as Matthew 18 admonishes, go to an offending brother first alone. And then the first step is, I will not, uh, I will not first share the offense with another person, I'm committed to restoring the relationship rather than exposing possible sin. I recognize most problems with people are personality clashes, and I will try to understand their actions based upon their perspective. Those two things right there, I think, are true in any kind of relationship. Now, when we say a conflict, we're talking about fight. It's okay to have a conflict in that we disagree but it's how we handle that disagreement that we're, we're talking about. And we can get, and we've, I love you guys shared this earlier, so I want to show you why you're wrong versus let me understand what you're thinking so that I can see if maybe we actually even agree. You're just saying it differently because we have different personalities. So that's my encouragement for you. Um, and then there's some practical applications on this as well. And, and really... It's hard to read all that, so I'm going to let you guys read that. Um, But this is for you to take home. Because, guys, the benefit of what you've learned today can be life-changing. For you, for your family, for your friends, your coworkers, if you start trying to understand how God wired them to glorify him and how you can be that light to them through the way God has wired you, trusting the Holy Spirit to lead. Okay, any questions? Thoughts, concerns, gripes, admonishments, mm-hmm. affirmation. No, I was kidding. No, okay. It was good. It was good. <laughs> I'm kidding. There's a lot of good information. In, I can't believe our three hours is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, That's our three hours. <laughs> All right, guys. You get into more details with this. <laughs> yes, you could. All right, guys. Well, can I, I would like to close this in prayer, and then uh, we'll, we'll be done. Father God, thank you so much for the time we've had today. I do pray that it's honored you, that it's been beneficial. Lord, I thank you for this group of people that you assembled here today. Lord, I pray that your spirit has been leading and guiding them and me, and that we have uh, been able to honor you and what we've talked about today. But that it wouldn't stop today. That everyone would leave here and be able to implement what they've learned and what they've processed for their own lives and for those around them. Lord, I pray that we would see people the way you see us uh, through the lens of Jesus Christ, that you show the love, uh, the care, the commitment, the forgiveness. You see us through Jesus, not as sinful people, but as holy people. And that, Lord, we see ourselves so often caught in the muck and mire, and we have trouble to see that. You've called us to be holy as you are holy. And Lord, it's my prayer that our goals, our focuses will be to, to grow more in your son's likeness. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.